Hello, everyone. I'm Erwin Barron. I'm happy to be with you in worship this week. We get to worship together in our own living rooms. It's kind of unique. Today, we're going to um, hear the story, usually called The Samaritan Woman at the Well, from the Gospel of John. You either watched a video of it or you heard a story of it a little earlier in worship. But I want us to think a little differently about that story that you've probably heard several times before. So I'm going to tell you some other stories related to it. Let's think about this story in a different way. The man sat straight up in bed. There was banging on the door. Someone was yelling, evacuate, evacuate, get out now. Tom jumped straight up in bed. He didn't know what to do. He looked around, he looked at the clock. It was 3.30 in the morning and people were yelling, get out. So he threw open the bedroom curtains and he saw fire, fire coming down the hill, right on the ridge behind his house. It was heading for his house very quickly. He jumped out of bed, he threw on some jeans and grabbed his wallet and his phone. And he tried to remember all the things he was supposed to do in an emergency. He knew he'd made a list, but where was that list now? So he runs into the kitchen. He, he knows he's going to need food and water, so he grabs a bottle of water that's sitting on the counter. He grabs a half-eaten box of cheer of Oreos. And he, then he thinks, family heirlooms, I'm going to need some family heirlooms. So he runs into the hall and he pulls a picture off the wall, a framed picture. And then he thinks, oh, the cat, where's the cat? So he starts looking for the cat everywhere. No time to find the cat. He darts out the door, jumps in his car, sees all of his neighbors heading out the same way, and they flee so quickly. He gets away to the evacuation center. But then what? Now, here he is, sitting on a cot in a junior high school gymnasium in Santa Rosa with mismatched shoes, a bottle of Kirkland generic water, and a half-eaten package of Oreo cookies, and no cat. He looks around at a room full of strangers, all just as confused and upset as he is, not a friend in sight, alone in this crowd with not even his beloved kitty. How could he have been so stupid? Why had he not been better prepared? Now, all is lost. All of his belongings are probably burned to cinders. His whole world is destroyed. And there is nothing, nothing he can do about it. He cannot make any things better. So, he takes this bottle of water, takes a sip, and a tear runs down his cheek. Well, here I am, just like you, sitting on this couch in this tiny little living room, staring at the four walls for six months, six months looking at these four walls. I can't go outside for fear of catching some deadly disease lurking in the very air I'm breathing. I can't go to the movies or a concert. I can't even go to church. I can't go see my friends. My distant family is so far away. I can only see them on that damn little screen. It's just not the same. And I certainly cannot get the hugs I so desperately want from everyone. And many of my friends have been furloughed from their jobs or laid off completely. And the unemployment checks are running out. And besides, the economy's in such a mess. How's anybody supposed to get another job? Oh, and all those great plans. I had so much travel and stuff I was going to do last summer and I was going to go visit everyone and I was going to work toward a new life, a retirement life, or, or find a new job. But now all of that is gone. Seems like such a waste. I really wanted to make the world a better place and to make my life better, but it's nothing but a mess. 
I turn on the TV, and all I hear is people yelling at each other in hatred and, and division. The long, simmering racism in this country seems to be bubbling up all over the place, and uh, people of color are getting shot in the street by the police. And armed vigilantes are roaming the streets ready to shoot anybody that disagrees with them. My life is just in shambles. The world is in shambles. And the worst thing, I can't do anything to fix it. So I sit here on the edge of my couch, alone, depressed. I grab a glass of water from the tap. At least it still works. I take a sip. And I sit here, drinking my warm water as a tear runs down my cheek.